Anyway, we're retro no, there's no need for that. We no. like anything no. retro. No. Today, we're doing one of our favourites, baby. When we was at school, back to school dinners, what are we doing? I'm not talking to you. Oh, come on, tell them what we're doing. There's no need to do it that loud. Oh, I'll do it quite next I'm going to do it quite next time. Tell them what we're doing. Steak pie. Steak mash, pie. Cabbage and peas. With scooped mash. Remember, like you used to get to school scooped. dinners? We'll be doing a bit of gravy as well, won't we? Oh, yeah. Lovely. Let's see what this entails. Right, well quite a lot of you have been really enjoying our school dinners videos and we thought we'd take it one step further with a main course which I really used to enjoy, baby. You enjoy all food. I do enjoy all food, you know that. But this one was a particular favourite because you do know that I am a pie eater. <laughs> yeah! Woo -hoo -hoo, happy days! Right, so this one is steak pie in a tray. Remember the trays used to, they used to cut it up in like squares? We've chose the three veg which we remembered. What was they? Cabbage. Potatoes and peas. Potatoes and peas, right. Anyway, so we're just running through the ingredients and let them know what we're going to cook with so they can probably do the same there. Well, we'll start with the pastry, are we? 425 grams of plain flour, 125 grams of lard, 125 grams of margarine, 125 mils of water, and some salt for seasoning. Right, well rather than show you the steak, we actually pre-cooked the steak because we're a great believer that if you cook it the day before, it's really nice and tender. So we, well, the flavours come We out didn't as want well, to spoil right? this, so we cooked it the day before. So let's just watch this little video and we just show you how we cook the steak. Right, so this is all we've done basically. We got some steak from the butchers, it's only braising steak. And Sharon just measured it out by putting it into the tray we was gonna cook it in. So once we found that amount, we just put it into our slow cooker. Now slow cookers are fantastic, if you've got one, use it. So we then peeled one large onion and we basically chopped it up roughly and we added that to our steak in our cooker. So all we've done now is just add a stock cube to a pint of hot water and just add that to our steak and onion mix in our slow cooker. So just give a bit of seasoning, a bit of salt and pepper. We use a uh, rough sea salt in there and also proper peppercorns. And we set this onto a low setting. Right, so first things first, we're just gonna prepare the pastry. Now do we wanna get the veg on? How long is this pie gonna take to cook, baby? Well, no, I'm gonna make the pastry and while the pastry's in the fridge, I will then prepare the veg. Right, well we'll do that. We'll go with what you say, because you obviously know. I'm the boss. You're the one who's read it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the one that makes dinners 365 year, days a year. 365 how, years? Well, how many, how many years we've been married? Enough, since 1984. Yeah. Right, so we're going to make the pastry now, so come on, baby. Might want you might want to buy the pastry. If you want to buy it, what sort of pastry is this, by the way? Short crust. It's a short crust pastry, hence we're putting the fat in it. And you could buy that, and it's to say, we're just going to cover the top of the, the actual tray like they did at school dinners time. So, right, what do you want to do, baby? Right, so we're just going to add our margarine and our lard to our flour mix and we're just going to knead it in and break it up and get that crumbly texture. That's what we're looking for here. We're just going to put our little pinch of salt in and also add our water just to get the mixture going a bit. So we're just going to stir it up and then we can get our hands in and really start the kneading. And if you want, you can add a little more flour if the mixture's a little bit too loose. And then get your hands in and knead it until you've got a lovely dough consistency. Once you've got that, all you do then, pop it in the fridge and just let it cool down. Right, okay, so you've seen the pastry being made there. We're just leaving it in the fridge just to prove for a little bit. So now we're just gonna prepare the veggies. She's just gonna peel the spuds. You're gonna chop them? I ain't got a chopping ball, baby. Cut them in, juice this off. Can't get on there, look, we need another one. Lucky we've got more than one, isn't it? All we're basically going to do, I'm just going to chop this up. Now, if I remember rightly, the cabbage used to be really fine when you used to get it in school dinner, so I'm going to keep it very fine and very small, like shards. Right, baby, what do you want done with this? Put in a saucepan with some water. Right, let me get that. Right, so I've got our shredded cabbage here. I'm just going to dump that in our uh, saucepan. Now this would have obviously been done on a larger scale. They would have probably just put this in a great big pot and just left it to boil. Because I remember school dinner cabbage was always overboiled, wasn't it? Now they do say that the mashed potato used to be lumpy, but I never remembered that. 
I just used to love the flavour of it. So anyway, so I've got that. I'm going to put that on the uh, cooker, but I'm not going to turn it on yet because the, the veg won't take hardly no time to cook. And as far as the pie is concerned, the, don't forget the pie filling, we've already cooked that. So it's just about a matter of browning the top of the uh, pastry. So I'm just going to whack them in half. You can cut them smaller, they'll cook quicker if you cut them smaller. At school, they used to have a big uh, a tumbler, they used to call it. And you just throw the potatoes in top in the top of it and it used to be like sandpaper and then rub all the skins off. So that used to be what I remember from the school days. Let's put some water in there. Right, okay, so we've got the veg ready and let's grab our meat. So let's show you our meat, what we've done. So at the moment it's actually cold, but it's well cooked and that meat is so tender. And all we're gonna do is just transfer that and the gravy into our cooking bowl. Oh, it's lovely, look at that. This was the beauty of cooking it beforehand because that meat now is so tender and the gravy is enhanced because it's allowed, it's allowed to soak into the meat and all the meat juices have come out and they've all mixed together. Oh, it looks lovely. I could eat that now. Right, so there you can see, that is our absolutely gorgeous pie filling there. Now this is an 8x10. This is the same tray we done our um, jam sponge in the other day. So we're just using this one, but obviously you'd scale it up if you was uh, making a bigger pie. Right, we'll just push that to one side now. And you're gonna now take the flour and roll out our pastry to put our cup in. Right, so we're just gonna dust the table down just to make the uh, pastry so it don't stick. Right, okay then, so time to roll the pastry out now. You can use a rolling pin or even a milk bottle, something like that, but we're gonna, you're gonna need to replicate the size of your bowl and the uh, dish. It could be a round one, could be a square one, in, as in this case. So just flip it on top, and literally just press it down into the corners, and we're just looking to make sure that it's completely overlapping. Now all this stuff around the outside, this excess pastry, we're not gonna cut it off, we're gonna fold it over, because that will give you a lovely thick crust, and that is one of the benefits of eating a tray baked pie, you've all got a crust. Now I've forgotten to put the peas in, so I went round to get a saucepan, and look what the sort of thing she does on camera when I've got the film running, look, sticking her tongue out, unbelievable. She's supposed to be a professional woman. I have to edit that out normally, but this time I've left it in. Let everyone see what you're really like. I'm really pleased with the way that looks. It looks rough, it looks ready, it looks like it's going to be very tasty. It's got a lovely thick crust on it now, and that's the sort of pastry that I love as well. So you're just going to give it a little bit of an egg wash now, baby. Yeah. Now you make it look lovely and golden. That's what this is going to do when we put this in the oven. And so really, all we need is to wait for the pastry to cook. Everything else inside has just got to warm through, so there's no cooking of the meat. And because we've done it this way, by cooking the meat yesterday, the meat will be absolutely lovely and tender. So that's the benefit of cooking it the day before. So I've, I would suggest you do the same. Right, so you're just gonna prick it now, just to let the air out so it don't bubble up in the middle. And hey presto, we're ready to go in the oven. Right, so that's our pie. Just before we put the pie in, baby, let's get the third piece of veg in, which I forgot about, which is the peas in our little saucepan. And just whack them over there. Right, so the pie now goes in the oven. How long's this got to be in for and how long's it gonna cook? 180 centigrade for 50 minutes. Right, okay. But we will give it a visual check and we should see bubblage maybe happening. So we've been watching it around the 20 minute mark onwards. So let's get that on. And around half an hour's time, just when it's about 20 minutes to go or something, we'll be putting the veg on. Okay then, baby, we've got that uh, time to kill now. What are we gonna do now? I'm gonna wash up and he's gonna put his school uniform on. Oh, -ho -ho! I haven't got one, baby. <laughs> Oh, well, I've got another hour before dinner, so I'm going to go and do a bit of uh, human biology. Whatever makes you happy. Right, baby, time to get it out. Oh, look at this, look. Do you want to get a tissue to put just underneath it, baby? This looks superb. Look at that. Right, we're just going to put that to one side for a minute. Because we're just going to make our gravy, and what we've got is some just normal gravy granules, haven't we? They probably would have done that back in the 70s or 60s or whatever. But we're going to use the juice from the cabbage, aren't we, baby? That's right. So let me get, the, get that plate there like that. There's your spoon. You take hold of your spoon, and I'll just pour the fluid in there. Just like that. You're going to stir, baby? 
Oh, lovely. Because you've got all vitamins in this. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's that. That's our gravy made. I'm going to drain the mashed potatoes, so I'll be back in a minute. Right, so I've got our cabbage. I'm going to leave it there for a second. Now the potatoes, are we going to put a little drop of milk in this, baby, and a little bit of butter? Do what you want, but don't make it too runny, because you've got to scoop it. So just a little splash of milk. Something like that. And a little knob of butter. You may or may not have got that back in the day, I'm not too sure, but that's what we're going to do. Right, we're just going to give that a good old mash up now. Right, okay, so we've got all our components now for our school dinner. Let's just show you how it would have been laid out. This is, we're just pretending we're at the school dinner counter now, yeah? You can be dinner lady, I could be little, little Johnny, and I'm going to ask me school dinner, right? Right, Miss Dinner Lady, could I have the pie, please? <laughs> There's nothing else to pick from. Eh? There's nothing else to choose from. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, look at that meat, look, go on. Oh, stay where you are. Right, I'll have some cabbage on there as well, Miss. Right, I'll have some peas as well. Um, me, me, miss? Yes? Could I, could I have two lumps of mash, please, miss? Oh, look at that, look! Ah, yeah, lovely. And a little bit of gravy on the top, miss? Where would you like your gravy? Could I have it over the pie and over the cabbage, please? Oh, that'll do, miss. That's lovely. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, let's have a closer look at this. Right, baby, it's now that time. This is our little presentation there. School dinners, just as you remember it. I'll tell you what's made that for me, the potato and the pie. And I think we've done the right thing there by cooking the meat yesterday. So let's now give it a try. Do you want to go first? Go on, you always, you always go first. You have a go first, baby. Get in, dig in, go on. There's no pie there, love. That's just a bit of crust. Well, let's try the pastry. Well, okay, you've got your own way of tasting things. I like a little bit of everything when I taste it. We know that. What's that meat like? Ooh. Oh, go on. That's go how on. tender it is. Oh, go on. Mm. Yeah? Is it like you remember? Mm. Let's have a go. Right, I'm going to go a bit bigger than you, I think. Because that, that pastry looks absolutely fantastic. A little bit of potato on the top. Oh, there's a big chunk of meat there, look. Here we go. Mm. Tonight he's actually eating now. Oh, Sharon! Oh! He's dinner with me. That pastry, I don't know whether you've uh, had shop bought pastry before, but if you make it the way we've made it, it's absolutely fantastic. And as for that mash, oh! Shush! But that annoyed me. Sharon, you've excelled yourself. I'm going to try the veg. Why don't you say a quick bye-bye and go and finish your dinner? I think we're going to have to. I haven't got anything more to say apart from, if you do like school dinners, this will take you straight back. Well, I'll tell you what, Sharon. I'll have to look into that a bit more. I would have been going back for seconds with this, I'll tell you. Look how big his mouth is. It's shocking. <laughs> Mwah, superb. I've got to go because I've got to finish dishing up dinner for the family. See you later, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this one. See you later. Bye for now. Bye. That was superb.